Hello friends, welcome to Azure Databricks and PySpark video tutorials. And in this video, I am going to give you overview and uh, latest and traditional architectures uh, in data engineering, like uh, how we will do in uh, big data data engineering and how we had an um, Informatica or ODA or a data stage, traditional ETL approaches. Okay, so before going to Azure data engineering, first we'll understand why we are using data factory and data bricks for data engineering okay so both are etl tools and why we are going to use both tools so when it comes to comparing with azure data factory and data bricks there are a lot of comparison is there so i will give you overview uh, the primary uh, usage of azure data factory and uh, data bricks so azure data factory is a cloud based elt means primarily hybrid ETL tool. So what is ETL and what is ELT first of all? So ETL is a common uh, where uh, which we are doing from past 15 years like Informatica, Data Stage. So there are many ETL tools are available. Traditional approach. You will be extracting data from different source system. So, so that data you will moving into first staging that staging will be your informatica server or data stage server any etl server so source system is different and the target is different and in between that you will be processing your in your data that data processing is called staging so that staging you will do many transformations that staging you will do many transformations so here three systems are there source staging target target is your final destination or you can say final warehouse where you need to move the data that is extracting data from different sources then doing data validation maybe junk data invalid data metadata whatever it is all the validations we will do in the transformation or you can say staging area that we will call it as transform area so that data is getting changed metadata is getting changed in this area finally valid data we will load into warehouse from there any reporting tool or any business users they will ex connect and they will analyze the data this is the etl approach traditional etl approach then when it comes to elt elt when you when you go back 10 years back oracle introduced called oracle data integrated so oracle data integrated primary usage is elt approach elt approach mean you don't have a separate staging server you don't have a separate staging server to do transformation just you will extract data from sources then directly you will load into target the target maybe you will create separate one storage area that is staging in target only you will do all these validations then finally you will move data to target warehouse when it comes to big data when it comes to cloud where we will load this data so we will extract data from different sources then we will load data into data lake in one of the location data lake in one of the location that we will call it as landing or staging you can call it as any name so from there again you will implement a transformation you will move to target target also in same data lake only it may be any warehouse any cloud warehouse or maybe mpp warehouse okay so this approach we will call it as elt approach your eadf will support both etl and elt approach okay etl and elt approach then why we need data bricks why we need data bricks adf is having advantage to connect heterogeneous sources mean if you have a different etl systems in your on premises you want to migrate that or there are some old ERP system which you want to migrate the data into cloud so ADF will help you connect on your source systems and getting the data so ADF is having multiple connectors where you can connect any cloud or virtual machines or databases or applications so that flexibility ADF is having so ADF is having that flexibility to connect and collect the data to connect and collect the data we will use Azure Data Factory for orchestration also we will use azure data factory so end to end orchestration also we will use azure data factory end to end orchestration means in this diagram if you look at this this is most of the companies uh, following any data engineering data flow architecture data flowing from source to target 
so data flowing from source to target means it may be any source it may be any target so when it comes to sources here so different types of loads you can you can consider as a different types of loads those may be batch load you have some erp systems you are having some historical data you want to process that or you have some live data which is real time data you want to fetch the data using any event hub or maybe any uh, real time supporting applications like kafka or anything which you can say streaming applications okay so your source may be historical data your source may be streaming data your source may be historical data your source may be streaming data let's consider this so connecting that and getting data one method like for historical data getting old system like mainframes sap or arc labs we can use azure data factory we can connect and get the data so what we will do we will copy data into landing we will copy data into landing so landing zone will have a as it is data as it is source data landing zone will have a as it is source data then from landing to different stages if you want to do metadata validations data validations direct adf like you, you cannot use direct copy activity to data validations because the complex validations or complex transformation if you want to implement it is not possible you have to go with the data flow so data flow which is available recently and still complex transformation you cannot implement still if you want to implement it is costly why because data flow minimum uses it uses minimum eight node cluster eight nodes per cluster if i have a small data set why i need a eight node cluster data bricks is available which only one node cluster also i can go with that that is single node cluster and other than that you have a multiple languages support sql pyspark r and multiple languages support is available and flexibility developer flexibility where you can develop any complex transformations so that's why we need data bricks here why not only adf means adf copy activity having limitations you need to use any scripting language so if you want to use any scripting language you need a computation server so data flow is available but data flow complex transformation still many things need to be added it may be it will take some more time it was under preview till last year two years back it was under preview now it is available but complex transformation because it's a completely ui based so anyway background is spark cluster a minimum it will uses eight node cluster so why i will go with data flow i can go with data bricks okay so data bricks having a flexibility in multiple languages so most of the data engineers know sql because there you can write sql that flexibility you have you can write complex transformation so that's why combination of adf and data bricks is required okay so from landing to staging or you can say branch layer what i will do i will validate the data i will validate the data then i will load into delta lake table so delta lake table you will get a better features there are many features available in delta lake table that we will discuss later so first we will apply metadata validations using databricks notebooks then we will load into branch so that you can call it as staging it's kind of daily truncate load that is overwrite overwrite means truncate load if if i find any metadata validations issues like special character issue or maybe a data type issue or maybe number of columns mismatch or any other metadata validations if it's failed that data i will move to bad data so bad data where it is also data lake in particular location a rejected data i will push to bad data so you can query table and you can get the data rejected data here then next level after metadata validation data validations plus business validations i will apply then i will move to this location that is silver layer so from landing to branch i will use databricks notebooks for metadata validation then i will move data to here next i will do 
data validations any business data validations because I'm using Delta table there is a flexibility you can write n number of SQL queries if you have a huge business data validations so SQL is will be easy or you can go with the PySpark as well if you are comfortable in PySpark you can write in PySpark then this silver layer will have a Delta table upsets upsets means it will have all the data valid data you can say curated data so curated data will be available here advanced analytics team machine learning team they can connect and they can connect to the silver layer they can go with advanced analytics then if if i have a requirement for traditional reporting you don't worry so there is another layer which we will use for traditional reporting so traditional reporting which we can go with another layer where you can say from here silver to gold or silver to another gold layer using synapse warehouse or maybe snowflake warehouse or maybe data lake delta lake lake house so based on your scenarios you can go with any of these warehouses maybe synapse warehouse or maybe delta lake also you can go with one of the warehouse or snowflake these are cloud warehouses you can say okay then once your data is available in gold layer so gold layer primarily aggregated data gold layer it is a always customer choice and every product is having own limitations and advantages and disadvantages that i'm not going to discuss here just i'm giving that some customers will go with the delta lake some customers will go with the snowflake some customers will go with synapse and some customers they are going with the combination of delta lake and synapse so this delta lake silver is for advanced analytics team and this gold layer so gold layer is primarily dimension model databases okay dimension model databases where you can find fact and dimensions with aggregated data you can connect any traditional reporting tool or maybe power bi and users can access the data so this way you can go up with this once data is available in business layer that is aggregated layer then whatever data is there in landing zone will move to backup will move to backup why we need to move backup mean so whatever data we are storing in gold layer once it is done landing should be empty why because if you have a landing which is historical files it will impact next load so next whenever you are trying to fetch if a folder your data lake is having huge file searching is very difficult it will impact the performance to avoid that to avoid that what we will do we will go with moving data into backup or you can say raw so that is just whatever data process data will move to backup so that process data you can move to backup then feature feature for example there's a customer requirement they change some requirement on gold layer they want to reload the data they want to reload the data so you no need to request source systems because your entire data is available here your entire data is available here so once your data is available then what you can do just you can move to a landing zone move to landing zone then the next jobs will take care about processing again feature if any business changes feature any business changes any logic changes you don't need to worry you don't need to request a source system because your data is available here where in backup raw zone so the raw is also entire thing in data lake your entire data is sitting on data lake okay so your data is available in data lake based on your requirement if you want to reload that is replay so if you want to replay that flexibility also is there the backup data move to landing from landing to again branch branch to silver silver to gold that is called reprocessing if it's required so this end-to-end -end orchestration you can use adf why because databricks is having a flexibility where you can go with the notebooks but databricks jobs does not have a complete orchestration like if something goes wrong if you want to restart your job where it's failed so that flexibility is not available so then you can go with for orchestration job scheduling which we can use azure data factory end-to-end -end job scheduling 
for validation purpose aggregations business data validations you can use databricks notebooks okay so this is a complete end-to-end -end data engineering architecture so for that you need a primary skill set is primary skill set for data engineering python and sql these two are common languages nowadays any big data or any azure cloud-based data engineering projects cloud-based data engineering projects python sql two languages then two etl tools two etl tools means which you can say adf and data factory two etl tools two languages then additionally if you have any warehouse knowledge warehouse means it may be snowflake it may be synapse any data warehousing concepts also is added to anywhere like in your profile if you add a data warehousing concept you will get advantage on that you can understand very easily and then whenever you are integrating from source to target anyway data lake we are using so you should have some basic idea about what is data lake so cloud storages anyway we are using cloud storages blob storage or data lake data lake gen 2 is available so you should have some proper idea about the gen 2 then synapse so synapse and delta lake so delta lake is also common uh, requirement which we are using in the cloud primarily data bricks so delta lake is having many features compared to normal data lake so where you can go with using delta lake and you will get a data related like acid properties time travel data then partitioning so there's many features are available that you will get that then other than that big data file system so hdfs so hdfs means here we will use dbfs and azure file system so dbfs is distributed file system and primarily from data brick side you should know commands related to notebooks how to create a notebook then how to run notebook how to schedule a notebook these all are a combination of both adf and data brick skill set okay if you like this video please say thumbs up and please subscribe my channel thank you watching my videos thank you very much